Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, today we are going to be talking about conspiracy theories. So today is a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be talking about something that is very, very sensitive and touchy and um, could offend a lot of people. But once again, I am not saying that any of this is true. I am just talking about what the conspiracy theories are. So without further ado, today we are going to be talking about 9-11 conspiracy theories. Now I can't say enough how awful that entire event was and how awful it is how many people were killed. But it is very fascinating because there is a lot of loose ends and a lot of things that don't really make sense about the 9-11 attack. So today we're just going to be scraping the surface and I'm going to tell you kind of the most popular conspiracies. Now the overall conspiracy is that the government and George Bush um, knew about 9-11 and might have orchestrated it because they wanted to, you know, go to war with Afghanistan and Iraq and have a reason. They were going to do it and blame the whole thing on them. So here are some theories that kind of add to that. So the first theory is that the World Trade Center did not actually collapse because the trains hit it, but instead it collapsed kind of like a controlled demolition. So basically, you know, when they're trying to tear down a building, they put bombs in each layer of the building. That way it kind of falls down straight down like that. Because if it were to fall down like that or like that, it could literally crush a bunch of other buildings. So when the World Trade Centers fell, people started noticing, hey, that looks just like a demolition. The way they fell, the explosions coming out of the sides. Some witnesses said they even heard explosions before the plane even hit. So here's a video that a lot of conspiracy theorists believe is proof that it was a demolition and you can actually see the bomb explosions on the side of the building. Check it out. I don't know. To me, it definitely looks like explosions. Doesn't really make sense, but once again, it's just a conspiracy. Now, a lot of scientists too came out and said there's no way that a plane flying into a building could cause the building, the whole thing, to fall down. That just does not happen. Scientists also said that the actual planes, the commercial airline planes, are made out of very light aluminum because, you know, they have to fly through the air. So there's no way they could have caused that much damage to those buildings. Now, a plane also flew into the Pentagon as well, and that is even more confusing. First of all, the hole that was left after the plane flew into the Pentagon was much smaller than an actual commercial plane. A plane is 125 feet long. The hole that was in the Pentagon was 16 feet long. That just doesn't make any sense. A lot of people are saying that it was actually a missile that flew into the Pentagon and that it was made to look like a plane. Also, the plane would have been shot down. If it was really coming anywhere near the Pentagon, they would have shot it down. So why did it get there? Speaking of planes getting shot down, the next conspiracy is so unnerving and literally keeps me up at night thinking about it and I hope it doesn't keep you up at night. Now this is the theory that Flight 93 might not have actually been what we thought it was. So if you guys don't remember, Flight 93 basically was a plane that was hijacked by terrorists and um, it was going to, you know, crash and kill a bunch of people. That was the plan, just like World Trade Center. But some of the passengers got up and kind of fought back and then, you know, eventually accidentally crash landed into the ground. They even made a whole movie about it a few years back. But there's two theories. One is that the plane actually didn't have everybody on board like overtaking the terrorists, that it actually got shot down. So one reason people thought it got shot down was because the actual crash site had very little debris. Like there was no evidence that a plane actually hit. There was just a big crater. Here's a clip that was on the news of a news anchor who was on the scene and she was talking about how she didn't even see any debris in this crash site. That's really all you see is a large crater in the ground and, and just tiny, tiny bits of debris. There has been at least one report that the uh, investigators out there, and there are hundreds of them, as I said tonight, um, have found nothing larger than a phone book. See, that's kind of scary. Then they found some debris 10 miles away from the actual crash site, which makes you think, well, if it did get shot down, it would have started exploding in the air and debris would have been spread out by 10 miles. Some witnesses even say they saw a small military plane fly by right after the crash, which makes you think, was it there because it had just shot down that plane? I don't know. Now the second theory about Flight 93 is very scary. This is the one that keeps me up at night. Okay, basically the theory is that the plane actually landed safely and that all of the people inside were taken off of the plane and were executed. And they're saying that it wasn't actually a plane that crashed into the ground. It was just a missile. And it was just to make us think that a plane crashed into the ground and to make us think that all those people died from terrorists. So what conspiracy theorists think is that the government took this plane that was filled with people and kind of flew them to another location and just 
took them all out. Now the reason this theory kind of makes sense is because a lot of phone calls were made from passengers on the plane to their family back home. But scientists have done studies and they said there's no way cell phones could ever work in the sky. That's not possible, especially back in 2001. Another thing that's really creepy is that the phone calls that were made were very weird phone calls. The passengers were calling their family and saying their full name. This is a quote from one of the calls. A man called his mom to tell him what was going on in the plane, and he started with, Mom, this is Mark Bingham. He said his full name. Have you ever called your mom and told her your full name? No. That just doesn't sound right. And that was a lot of the calls. A lot of people were calling home using their full name. I don't know. Sounds creepy. A lot of the family members have actually come out and said, I don't know what was going on, but that was not my child that called me. That was somebody else. So it makes you wonder, are all those people that were on Flight 93 actually dead? Maybe they're not even dead. Maybe they are living in seclusion somewhere. I don't know. Now the last theory we're going to talk about today is something we talked about previously, which is crisis actors. Now crisis actors, once again, are people who pretend to be victims or pretend that they were there during some crazy event and they go on the news and they talk about it. But in reality, they're actors and they kind of just go from event to event and put on a wig and different glasses and pretend to be different people. So here's some footage of a man who was interviewed on 9-11 about what went down. Check it out. Green right into the side of the Twin Tower, exploding through the other side. And then I witnessed both towers collapse. Now here's another man years later with a different name talking about a shooting at LAX. They looked in my backpack, they they frisked me a couple times. I, I don't have my ID, so I couldn't or my ticket or anything, but I just told them, I mean, I guess they saw that I didn't have any weapons or didn't have any evidence. That's the same guy. Listen to the voices back to back. And then I witnessed both towers collapse, so I couldn't sell my ticket or anything. See? That's 100% the same man. So that's another crisis actor, and he just got caught. So it makes you think, why are there crisis actors? Why are they pretending to be at different events? How much control does the government have over the news and all these events? I don't know. It makes me really scared. So those are just a few of the 9-11 conspiracies. There are hundreds more, and they're all very, very fascinating. If you want to check out more information, um, there's a really cool documentary called Loose Change on YouTube. You can just search it. And there's a lot of really great stuff on YouTube about it. But I will warn you, it will make you lose sleep and it will make you think about everything and what is real and what is the government really doing. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you want more conspiracy theories that are kind of like this and more dark and kind of fucked up, let me know down in the comments. Or if you want me to go back to like more celebrity stuff, I'll do that too. But I really just find this shit really fascinating. So I hope you do too. All right, you guys, I'm going to go. Make sure to give this video a thumb up and subscribe because I make new videos every single day. And I will see you conspiracy theorists tomorrow. Bye. If you like strawberries, you're gonna love this. I don't. It's just not great. It's a lot of strawberries. It's a lot of strawberry flavored ice cream. I think there's cake in here, but like that doesn't fix things. That's like having treats at a funeral. Like, oh, that's so sweet that you brought cake pops to a funeral, but grandma's dead. That's how I feel about this.